There is a mental health crisis among children. The American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatrists reports New York City public schools need more than 200 more mental health providers to meet the needs of students. That's why CBS News is launching a series of reports breaking the stigma, children and mental health. Right now, CBS 2's Jesse Mitchell introduces us to the teenagers in Harlem who are working hard on their own, pushing for change. At the Brotherhood Sister Soul nonprofit, young leaders learn to develop their voices. The Brosis Liberation Program guides interested teens in policy making and activism, sparking ideas for societal shifts in Isabel Fernandez. It's wanting to make a change. It's not wanting to destroy anything. We just want to fix what was built wrong. Joined by Justin Butler, Dakari Lindsay, and just a few friends from other youth groups, the Save Our Schools campaign took them to City Hall and the state capitol to advocate for more mental health health care funding last year. Their demands were denied. It's very frustrating because it's like we know the problem. Why can't we address it? If you really want to break it down and say, how are we going to help these schools? How are we going to help support these students? And then you're, the teachers and parents are saying like, oh, we need to enforce more police officers. We need to see what they're doing every five seconds. No, we need to come to the person and be like, what's wrong? Sit down with them, have a talk. They're still human at the end of the day. Federal data shows 70% of public schools saw an increase in students seeking mental health support during the pandemic. Yet 88% of public schools admitted they were not properly staffed to address the needs. When you hear those kind of numbers, that's, that's eye opening. We saw that on the ground. We saw that COVID had really broken something. And so we knew that we needed to do something. Manhattan is among few areas that exceed the need for school counselors. But students say those staff members are not distributed evenly on the upper end of the island. What we have now is guidance counselors and college counselors, and some schools don't have that. And then sometimes a guidance counselor is also considered a social worker. Lindsay serves as a student mediator to help counsel her peers and fill the gap. The stress load, the workload, it's a lot. So being able to have that person be like, I got you, I'm here to support you, that goes a long way. A lesson in politics and persistence. The students have now adapted their plan, ready to try again with a more targeted approach, focusing on tangible goals like wellness centers inside select schools that need it most. Have a space to deep brief about how our day went, like little, simple little things that you wouldn't think would actually make your day different or even affect your mental health different, but it actually would. And it's like a sense of community, a sense of love, a sense of realness. It's, it's more convenient that way because it's just like, it's right downstairs. It's, it's, it's right there. It's like a mini process in the school. Right, yeah. right, right. It's, it's right there. As these it's students right stomp out yeah. the stigma surrounding mental health care, they hope this time their stories bring forth support. In Harlem, Jesse Mitchell, CBS 2 News. And in the coming weeks, you'll hear more stories about how children are coping. We'll also hear from parents who have found ways to help. If you know someone who's struggling, there is assistance. There's assistance available. Call 988 for the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. There are people there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, answering the phones.